voice. Lift up our hearts and celebrate. Celebrate. Would you lift your voice with me right now?
Hallelujah. Lord, you are good to your people. There is none like unto you, Lord Jesus. You have never let us down, not even once. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the psaltery and heart. Praise Him with the timbrel and the dance. Hallelujah. We can take a minute right there and just give a little dance to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, praise Him with the string instruments. Praise Him with the organs. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Praise Him upon the high sounding cymbals. Hallelujah. That everything that has breath, if it's coming out of our lungs, everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can be seated for just a moment. I'm going to take just a little time to give you the awesome opportunity to give the Lord and praise Him and worship Him, to give unto Him our offering tonight. This campground was not always here. It was once an empty field with scrub oak and all kind of gnarly trees and just a lot of underbrush. This campground's eventually got one building and then another building and then another. And they were all small in the first place. But God has blessed this district in such a way because of your giving and because of your church giving and because of the ministry's giving. We are where we're at today. Hallelujah. The Lord loveth a cheerful giver. The Lord is smiling right now because He knows what's in your checkbook and He knows what's in your wallet. And He's looking down over the balcony of His glory saying, this is going to be a happy night for me. Shout amen. Many of you uh, pastors and churches have sent checks to uh, help offset the expenses of camp meeting. And many of you have brought things that uh, are from in the financial way from your churches and from your accounts tonight that you will give. We weren't always this way, truly. My father, in his earliest ministry, walked around central Florida from as far as Oxford, which is near Wildwood, which is near Gulf Hammock, which is near, I'm, I'm getting on out there, but I'm a country boy, and we were raised not only poor, but we was raised poor. And really is amazingly, Jason, Pastor Jason and I were talking the other day how good God's been. You know, it's such an, it's, it's an incredible thing for us to, I'm not speaking against having fundraisers. We, we should do that and thank God for every bit of funds that come in. But there was a time when every time we needed money, we did a fundraiser, a car wash or a fireworks tent or, or just anything to raise some funds. And we, we've done that and at times we still do those things. And I thank God for people who are willing to do those things. 
But as God has blessed and the, that first generation has come into the church and second generation has come into the church and third and fourth and fifth, it's not unusual now for us to, uh, you know, dedicate babies that uh, are like fourth and fifth generation in just the one church, Souls Harbor. And I'm sure it's the same way in many of your cases. God is good. God is good. One last story I'll tell is that my father was always a giver. He taught me to give. And I give him a lot of credit for the blessings that have been upon my life. We didn't start out where we're at now either. Um, yeah, I, not even near. I won't go into all that. But, but my dad went to a fellowship meeting one night, as it were in those days. Every, I think it was every fifth Sunday. They had it, what they call fifth Sunday meeting. Not meeting, meeting. And we went to those. And he went to one, and a preacher got up to receive the offering, and dad was kind of squirming because he had $5 in his pocket, and he knew his gas tank was absolutely empty. And he had 25 or so miles to drive home. And they didn't give any grace either. When it was out, it was out. And so the Lord moved on him in that offering for the missions and for the and just for the expense of having the meeting to give that $5 in the offering. And he talked, he kind of argued with God for a minute or two. Lord, I, 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 got my, I have my family with me. I, I, I need to get home. But he gave that $5, and I do mean the only $5, and there wasn't anything higher than that in his wallet. That was all he had. $5 he gave. And he went out to his car Wondering, what am I going to do? And uh, as, as he was on his way, my brother shook his hand. And he felt something in the hand. But the man pressed a $5 bill in his palm and said, Brother, God told me to give this to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he got down to the gasoline station, the first one he came to, because he knew he was just running on fumes. And he asked the attendant, that one needs to pump the gas for you. He asked the attendant, would you please put $5 in there? The attendant squeezed the nozzle, the handle on the nozzle, and it, the gas just flooded out back on him. And the uh, man said, sir, your gas, you don't need any fuel. He said, I, I've got to need fuel. I was empty." tried it again he tried it again they finally got a flashlight out there and the gasoline was full all the way up to the cap <laughs> hallelujah I'm talking about what God can do when we give what we've got I don't have a thousand but I've got a hundred I don't have ten thousand but I may have a five hundred or a thousand God blesses when we do the best we can do Praise God. We, the church at home has given so much all the way through uh, these, this pandemic. We haven't dropped any of our missionaries. We've not dropped our giving to the district. We've not dropped anything lower than it was. We've just kept on. And you know what? God took us through. God has brought us through. And we've come out the other side. And I believe we are out the other side in, in the, where the full sun shines. Is, full sunshine is upon us. And I pray that you'll give a wonderful offering tonight. Everybody's going to give something. Shout amen. Bring your offering as we magnify the Lord all together. When I cannot see When I can't take another step, Lord Would you carry me? When I've lost my fight 
Will you be my strength? Will you set me a table in the presence of my enemies? I shall not want. I shall not want. Will my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. I shall not want. I shall not want. Cause my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not want. I will lift my eyes to where my help comes from. And I won't be afraid of the shadow, cause I've seen the sign. No, I will not stop when the way gets hard, yes. Cause the green only grows in the valley, and that's where you are, God. Say, I shall not want, yes, Jesus. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd, yes. Oh, somebody testify tonight and say, I shall not want God, no, no. I shall not want Cause my cup's running over. Let's sing that again, say, come on, lift that up, say, I shall not want, no, no. I shall not want, no, no. See, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. I will lift up my eyes to where my help comes from And I won't be afraid of the shadow cause I've seen the sun Anyone seen the sun tonight? I will not stop Lord when the way gets hard Cause the green only grows in the valley and that's where you are Yeah, I shall not Somebody that that I'm afraid to die.
right now. I don't know what you walked into this room with tonight. I don't know what you're facing spiritually. I don't know what you're facing at home. But sometimes you have to remind yourself of who your God is. The Bible says to encourage yourself in spiritual songs and hymns. So I wonder tonight if you can get this in your soul. I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Say, I will fear no. Fear no. And we had to have what they call an anthropause in the past year plus. But ladies and gentlemen, we're back. I've been around Florida a minute, and this isn't the first time I've led songs here. And I'm sort of known at my church for pulling out an oldie. And so I don't know if they knew what they were doing when they knew that they knew that they wanted to know me. But there's songs like, There shall be light in the evening time. The path to glory you will surely find. It's in the waterway. It will give you life today. Baptized in Jesus' name. Young and old, repent of all your sin, and the Holy Ghost will enter in. For evening time has come, and it's a fact that God and Christ are. Wait, wait, we're about to hear some preaching. 
But I want to tell you, we got a bunch of young pups on these instruments. And I love them all. But you know what the, these pups don't know sometimes? They got all Maverick City down. They got all Hosanna down. They got all that down. But they don't know what they're doing when we start breaking out apostolic, one God, Holy Ghost song. And they get a lost look in their face. Sometimes it takes somebody graying up in this region to break out an old one. So they practiced it, they're getting it down, and we're about to sing something. If you don't know it, learn it. It's who we are. The mighty God is Jesus. The Prince of Peace is He. Everlasting Father, the King eternally, the wonderful in wisdom. You can't sing this with beat. This is bigger than beat. By whom all things were made, the fullness of in Jesus is display I don't think you're ready I don't think you're ready I don't know if you're ready I'm trying to see if you're ready let's go up a key I'm feeling my soprano coming on. Emmanuel, God with us. Jehovah, Lord of hosts. The coming present spirit who fills the universe. The advocate, the high priest. The Lamb for sinners slain, the author of redemption. Oh, glory to His name. It's all in Him. It's all in Him. Beginning and the end, the living word incarnate, a helpless sinner's man, our wisdom and perfection, our righteous and power. Yes, all we need. If you're 
song lyrics only come from lyrics.com, you'll miss this verse. We're singing doctrine right now. This gets you ready for the word. Because something's on its way. I said something's on its way. Will you sing this with me? Our God for whom we wait will be the glad refrain of Israel recreated when Jesus comes again. Come and save us, our King and Priest to be. For in Him dwells our fullness and love. Is He? preacher tonight, but I'm going to tell you, Brother Barnum got something stirring in me. He started talking about old times, yesterday and yesteryear, and it took me back in my mind to the late 30s when my grandparents, who were attending a denominal church at the time, went to a tent revival in Otter Creek, Florida, where Brother D.L. Welch was preaching Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The oneness of the God. He was preaching what we've been singing about. And my grandparents saw the oneness of the Godhead. And they saw the validity of baptism in Jesus' name. And they said, yes. And when they said, yes, their church turned them out. But they kept walking in that yes. And because they said, yes, my mother had an opportunity to say, yes. And because she said yes, it gave me a chance to say yes. And because I said yes, my son and daughter-in-law are here tonight. They had a chance to say yes. We're here tonight because somebody ahead of us said yes. Giving us the chance to say yes. If you're here tonight and God is dealing with you about the truth of his word, please don't say no, because when you say yes, you will say yes and release the power of God for generations to come. Should the Lord tarry. Oh my, 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 my. What a tremendous presence is in this house. You can make your way back to your seat if you'd like, but remain standing. I respect that you've been standing for a while, but I want tonight to honor those that honor is due. We're happy this evening to have Sister Canell with us. God bless her. Amen. Sister Canell, we honor you. We honor you tonight. In her absence, we honor Sister Bobby Crabtree and together Sister Canell, Sister Crabtree, their husband served this district for 34 years in leadership. I want to give honor tonight to Bishop and Sister Williams who have led us. We are where we are tonight. Because wonderful people have led us, praise God, their tremendous years of service, and I appreciate that so very, very much. In the last, in the last uh, couple of board meetings in February, and now our board meeting that we just had in July, we've been able to license 36 brand new ministers in the Florida district. We're excited about what God is doing. Amen. Our best days, as it has already been stated, our best days are not behind us. 
And I want to be very clear that our best days are not necessarily before us, but we are living presently in our best days. Amen. Right now and certainly well into our future. I am so thankful for the presence of God that has been in these services and thank you for everything that you have pressed through to be here Wednesday night, Thursday, Thursday night, today and tonight. The presence of the Lord is in this house. It is such an honor beyond our words to have Brother Josh Carson with us. What a mighty word of the Lord we heard last night. Amen. Brother Urshan, Brother Wells has been joining us. But on this last night, I wonder if we could just lean in. I know sometimes after multiple efforts of just leaning in, service after service after service, there can be a weariness that presses in. But I believe we can push back against that. And how many is willing to lean in one more time? Amen. Let's lean in one more time and let the power and the presence of God bless us. Brother Carson. I know it was the blood I know it was the blood There's an old spirit in this place I turned to Brother Ursh and I said there's an old spirit What did he say? He said the ancient of days is in this place I know it was the blood It was the blood for me Somebody said, I know it was the blood. Now, if you're really thankful, you're just really thankful. I know you're glad to be at camp meeting. I know you're glad we get to have it again. I know you're glad about this worship. But if you're just really thankful that Jesus Christ has brought you here, Would you lift your hands and lift your voice and give Him praise? Come on, He's been good. Come on, He's been good. He's been really good. Yes, He is. I have to tell your neighbor at the very beginning, excuse me, but he's been good to me. Ah, praise God. Luke, Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I give such high honor to Brother Boyd, Brother Varnum, the Williams, this distinguished district board. I appreciate your trusting me to stand behind this sacred desk in this incredible opportunity to share the word of the Lord. I have such high esteem and respect for Brother Urshan, Brother Wells. I honor you both very much, Brother Wells. I honor you for delivering what thus saith the Lord. Luke chapter 8. I want us to look at verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. Because when Jesus says it's time to go, it's time to go. 
But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. They came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose. He rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, and there was a call. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, odd time to be afraid, they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water, and they obey him. I want to preach on this Friday night of Florida camp. I apologize in advance for my voice. I tell you this is multiple camp sin. But if you'll preach with me, I'll give you everything I got left. Because I feel like the Lord has sent me on assignment tonight to preach about a stormy revelation. A stormy revelation. If you're ready to receive the word of the Lord, I want you to throw your hands towards heaven. Come on, I want you to lift your voices and magnify Him. Give Him the very best praise you've got. Let Him know He is the object of your affection. Let Him know that you recognize He is magnificent. Come on, it is a matchless God that we serve. Before you're seated tonight, find a few people and tell them it's a stormy revelation. It is an interesting text, the chapter that we have dove into tonight, that well which we have so plunged our bucket for this evening's refreshment. It is, it is a chapter that begins very specifically and very strategically as it is speaking about those who follow Christ. Beginning... In verse 1, it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, women who had been healed of evil spirits, and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others. I love that so quickly paired together those who follow him with the twelve are the ones he has healed of infirmities and those whom he has cast demons out of. Because in the economy of God, there are two types of people. There are those who are bound and there are those who are free. Say, 
Sickness is a God, but you can turn it into an idol. But in the economy of God, everything is subject. Unto that name. Unless I'm in the wrong building, we still believe he was wounded for our transgressions. But he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace pushed upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. But pre-stripes, he just woke up. And it was done. I'm going to tell you, Mary, less seven demons, good reason to follow. You think anybody close to her had much of a complaint that she followed him? When you really get a God change, your whole family's liable to come to God when you really. Now, if you want to go to church and still be a liar, if you want to go to church and still act like a pervert, if you want to. If you want to go to church and still do a little social drinking, you that probably not going to. But you let a demon, you let seven demons. I'm telling you, people will understand why you follow him. There is a reason why we follow him. We follow him because without him, we are bound. But through him, we are free. Come on, clap your hands under the Lord if you know it's right. So the truth is, stay bound if you want to. That's on you. Brother Wells, you could be bound by the opinions of people and then not preach what you know to preach. Am I right or wrong? But you've got to preach what thus saith the Lord regardless of what anybody. Brother Urshan, they've told you that the preaching of the oneness of God was not critical, yet I have never heard you lace one masterpiece together that his Perfect fulfillment of the oneness of God was not how some, just some way, even if I think he's not going to, there it comes. Why? Because we know who he is. And we know what he has done for us. So if you want to let your friend's opinion bind you, go ahead. If you want to let your drunk uncle's opinion bind you, go ahead. But as for me, I've got to follow him because he's the only one that delivered. He's the only one that picked me up. He's the only one that turned me up. Come on, it wasn't your physician. It was not your banker. It was not your boss. It was your God. And his name is Jesus. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. They're they're following him. And he begins to tell the parable of the sower. And these spiritually in tune disciples, when the crowd is somewhat distanced, says, what is all this about? And Jesus has to tell them unto you, 
It's given to know the mystery. But it's given to them in parables. Seeing they may see. Hearing. And not understand. And it is from this scene. That Jesus after having walked his sandaled earthly feet in and out of town and village working through the marketplaces working through the homes and working through the avenues people would be drawn to him so much so that now Jesus has begun to draw his own self and his disciples near to the lake near to the sea and now all those places where he has stepped out of those cities and out of those villages the crowds have begun to gather unto him because Jesus will draw a crowd you think your light show will draw a crowd Jesus let me just say something right here you cannot compete with a lot of churches in your city You cannot compete with their money. You cannot compete with their lights. You cannot compete with their fog. But their fog cannot replicate the Shekinah glory that can fill the house when Jesus named people who believe in the power of the revelation of His name begin to magnify Him. And they come to him. Thank you for saying the door knocking thing today. Just let them come to Jesus. They're gathering around. And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you tonight, they were having Good church. It was a tent service. It was outside by the water, but it was good church. It was good church. Not even dependent upon a structure built by men. In preparation for the understanding that we might have this treasure in earth. And in the middle of it all, the people are praising. The people are pressing. Brother Elms was singing an all hymn. Where's he at? Were you having fun? It's a shame if you can't have fun in church. Hey, if you can't enjoy singing that, you don't know him like I know him. The fullness of the Godhead. And they were having good Good church. I mean the crowd was magnificent. Here's how I know it was good. His mom and siblings show up fashionably late. Like some of (laughs) y'all. And his, his mom, can you Picture Mary not having a seat. Mary is trying to press through the crowd. And they come to him. Simon Peter got a turkey leg in his mouth. Hey, your mom. She's here. And Jesus said, Who? Is my mother. This is where I'd have been like, I know you're God, but you, 
Who are my brothers? He said, look around you. This is my family. It is the text from which we draw the conclusion that the church and the followers become the mother. When we say that God is the father and the church is the mother, it's because any time someone walks into our assembly, there ought to be enough fruit of the spirit hanging off the vine of the mother that they can feel love and joy and peace and gentleness. And Let me stop and say something right now. If you want the gifts of the spirit, you need to bear the fruit of the spirit. And if you're really a mature apostolic, quit picking off your brother's tree. That is the only logical reason on the front side of the text that I could understand Jesus saying, let's let's get in the ship and go. Because my mama is five foot nothing. And there have been a couple times in my life where I made the mistake of thinking I was grown. I'm not that grown. Because mama can give you a look. I was always more nervous when she said, we'll talk later. I will take my belt off. You beat me right now. Right here, right now. I don't want, can I get a witness in the room? Don't wait. I don't want to wait till later. I don't want to dread it for the next three, four, five hours. Dreading what I'm going to get. Just beat me now. <laughs> and that's the only reason because they were having good church. Everything was good. Demons were being cast out. Infirmities were being dried up. The crowd, the crowd was not sitting in their seats sucking their thumbs. They were not waiting on some revelation of an old passage to make them love God in a new way. They were pressing. Jesus, Jesus, He's our man. If He can't do it, no one can. Give me a J. J, you got your J. Foam fingers being pulled out of the crowd say J E S U S. And in the middle of all that, he said, Let's get in the boat. If I'm one of the disciples, I'm saying, No. Because I'm close to you and people associate me with you because they came to give you stuff, they're giving me stuff. They like me because of you. I gave up a lot to follow you. You didn't give up anything worth keeping to follow here. Quit trying to remind him about the job you gave up or the life you walked away from or the career. I'm talking to somebody right now. He saved your soul when he pulled you out of that miry clay. If you'd have stayed at that job, you might have had an affair that ruined your whole family. You ought to thank God. He ripped you out. I'm talking to some struggling home missionary that's trying to build a church and you were on a collegiate career to be a doctor or a lawyer or I don't care if you're barely scraping it together. If he put you on this journey, 
then it's the right turn. And uh, so whether they relent or not, they get on the boat. See it however you want. This is how I see it. I don't, I don't know. I'm going to call you. I'll call you. I'll tablet you. I'll tablet you. I'll send a pigeon. I'll send a pigeon. You s- and they go. And they get on the boat with Jesus. There's got to be a, a little part of us that thinks... It must have feel pretty spectacular though that when he did leave, they're the only 12. Yeah, I'm I'm with him. You you didn't know? We were we're like this. We're like actually we're like 10 plus one, two. We're like we're like this. They're pulling away. They're waving. I'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be, we'll be back. We're going with G. It's not so bad. We're with G. We're not so Jesus. Until. I know that some of you struggle with this. Partially I blame Elijah. On the battle with those prophets of Baal. Where their God will not answer. What does he say? Maybe he's sleeping. You know he was bold. But it's because he had truth. Or maybe it's because the psalmist. Under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as moved. The psalmist in Psalm 121 in verse 4 says that the keeper of Israel, he does not sleep and he does not slumber. But ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was sleeping. Oh, I don't think he was. He was? No, I think what that was, you're wrong. He was out. O-U-T, out. I don't know if he snored, but I picture it. Good sleep. Melatonin sleep. You know who you are. You know who you are. It's natural. And a storm comes down. I will tell you what the Lord spoke to me very clearly about tonight is that there are a multitude of people right now in a storm. Some of you think that's prophetic. Some of you think that's pathetic. I really don't care which side of the line you're on. It might be sickness. And it is life. It might be financial difficulty. It might be a marriage issue. But it is a storm. And it's your storm. But I've come with a word from heaven for you tonight. That is forever settled. He is the master. Of every storm. Oh I've heard that before. Well hear it again. There's not a sickness. He cannot take care of. There's not a tumor. He cannot make disappear. There is not a blood disease. 
He cannot eradicate. There is no financial difficulty that the one who owns the cattle of a thousand hills and can put money in a fish's mouth cannot provide. He knows about your storm. He knows where you're living. And he sent me here to tell you, your storm is about to bring a revelation. Only if you believe it, I want you to throw your hands towards heaven. And I want you to begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, some of you, you know I'm talking to you. You don't want anybody to know, but you're waking up with it. And you're going to bed in the middle of it. You wake up in the turbulence of the storm. You are living in the turbulence. You don't want anybody to know. You climb in your nice car. You put on your nice suit. You put on your plastic smile. But there's a storm in your life. For some of you, it is the storm of transition. For some of you, it is the storm of insecurity. But I've come to speak to every storm. I know the maker of the wind. I know the maker of the water. I know the maker of it. There's only a storm because he has allowed it for you to get a revelation of who he is. I'm sorry. I wish it were not so. But some revelations only come through storm. If you never needed him to be Jehovah Jireh, you wouldn't really know. You know what it means to need a provider when there's nothing in the cupboard and there's nothing in the bank account and there's a note that's due and there's final... I'm talking to somebody right now. Everybody around you looks like they've got it together. But you're in the storm of financial difficulty. And I'm coming to tell you, don't forget who you're on board with. Don't forget who you're in the middle of this storm with. Don't forget who you're in this ship with. Be seated, be seated. Since we're the three amigos preaching, I promise you that if one of us has to wake him up, I'm sending you. We're arm wrestling for this. Why don't you go wake him? Don't you know that's how they, why don't you go wake him? Why don't you go wake him up? Why don't, why, don't you, why don't you go wake him up? Hey, Pete, you say anything. Why don't you? I've said so much about Simon Peter. I'm afraid he's going to have a talk with me when I make it to him. You go wake him up. I don't know who, who drew the short stall, but I want to believe it was Brother Wells. Preaching about persecution. We send him. We send him. You go. You go. You earned it. Told us we were coming here. But at some point, somebody's got to get the guts. Because I'd rather be chastised by deliverance. I love the people that are like, oh, they should have just rode it out. If it was me, I would have just rode it out. I would have just waited on Jesus.
I would have just waited on Jesus. If I'd have known Jesus was on board, I'd have just waited on Jesus. No, you wouldn't. I'm telling you, if the disciples that had just watched him throw some spirits out of her and watched her walk up missing an ear and walk away with one, if you think they couldn't hang on, but don't you see them? Here's how I see them. I'm sorry. Here they are in the water, and here, here they are. Water's crashing in, and they're in the ship, and, and they're just bubbling this water out, and it's, it's rocking and waving. I hear a little must. Maybe you've never done this. Maybe you've did a little, never done a little murmuring under your breath, but I, here's what I hear. Yeah, get in the ship with us. Why don't you get in the ship with us? We'll just go. Having great church on the Let's just go to the other side. Go to the other side. It'll be fun, he said. We'll go, he said. Let's just go. I don't see you anywhere downstairs sleeping like man in the middle of a storm. Ain't he? Oh, hey. Maybe you've never done that, but I've got to be honest with you. There have been times in my life that I thought, where are you at, God? Maybe you're better than me, but there have been some storms in my life that I thought, you've got to be kidding me. You got me in the middle of this. I wouldn't even be, I had a turkey leg in my hand. I had all them girls around me. Pressing in. You know those boys were having a good time. The average age of the disciple was 16. Tell me they weren't frightened on the boat. Hey, master, you know when you wake him up, you, you master. That's what you're going to say. You're going to say, you're going to go humble. I'm going to go ahead. Hey, G- master. And he didn't, he didn't. Eh. Master. Um, take your time. But it's getting bad. We're going to die. We're in jeopardy, not the game, but really, we're, we're, we're in trouble. And Jesus, hey, wind, knock it off. Hey, water, shut up. And the disciples who had watched him bring demons out of Mary and bring infirmity out of the multitude got afraid and said, What manner of man is this? I knew he could speak to people, but I did not know he could control the atmosphere. I'm telling you, he's got the whole world in his hands. You learned it as a child, but you need a fresh revelation. He can speak to the wind of your life. What manner of man is this? I tell you what manner of man this is. This is the one Peter is soon to say, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. But would he know without a storm? Because the truth is, most of us in here wouldn't love him like we love him without some of the storms we Oh, maybe I'm not preaching to you, but I'm preaching to some people in this room that hell tried to ruin your whole family. Hell tried to ruin your ministry. He tried to break up your merit. You look at these dignitaries behind me. The only reason they're still here is because when hell fought, Jesus fought on their behalf. When the storm came, they stayed resolute. Master! Master! 
I want you to throw your hands towards heaven all over this house because transparency is about to hit this place. Come on, someone be reminded. He is the master of my storm. He is the master of my family. He is the master of my today. He is the master of my tomorrow. The word they had was Jesus said, let us go to the other side. And if he says it, it is going to happen. I need, I need only people that can be real right now. Transparent people. That can acknowledge him. I am convinced that the root of worship is acknowledgement. That can acknowledge him. That would be honest enough to say. Brother Carson. I'd rather nobody knows. But I am in a storm right now. I'm in a storm. Or my family's in a storm. Or the medical condition is a storm. It might not be. It might not be like their storm, but I'm in a storm. If you're in a storm, I want you to lift both your hands and just wave them a little bit right now. I want you to turn your hands into the waves for a minute. And I want you to replace the waves of your life with the waves of your hands. <clears throat> That's all right. Come on to the altar. I don't care who knows. Master, we will perish without your help. Come and stand. Come and stand. Come and stand. Come and stand. That's all right. Come and stand. Brother Boyd, the waves dissipate. The wind ceases. And they do, Pastor Urshan, in fact, reach the interpretation of the other side. Please watch. And when... They do. The other side is revealed. It is the country of the Gadarenes. It is housing a demoniac. I have been in that body of water. It was there in that body of water where I asked the pilot of that vessel, please show me where the Gadarenes is. And I fixed my eyes upon that location. And with my mind swimming through the text of Luke 8, I asked that man, can storms like that still occur here? He said, if the wind begins to turn the right direction, you will watch every vessel on this little lake begin to vac vacate with expedience because many a ship has been lost even in recent years. It can go from the smallest of a white cap to waves that will tip a vessel in only a moment. But while they were on the water, 
The Bible says that he was in the tombs. They tried to bind him with chains. They tried to bind him with fetters. But the chains he would break and the fetters he would pluck asunder and he would cut himself with stones. Cutting is not a new devil. Cutting himself, striving to release endorphins, trying to get some sense of relief if I can navigate the pain internally to pain externally. And this was not the first storm that he had seen rapidly blow up on that water. And the storm that little vessel was in was very representative of the storm in his life. Here goes another one about to be capsized. The storm came out of nowhere. I know how that feels. I used to have a home. I used to have a family. I used to have friends. Ah, it's another storm. But out of nowhere. Something he had never seen before. The vessel that was rocking. Peace. I see his eyes as big as saucers as he peers out of that, that cave, that tomb. Why can't it be for me? Why can't it be for me? I cannot imagine what it must have been. But I do know that it took every excuse from that time till eternity out of any person that says they cannot approach Christ. When a man possessed with a legion of demons. Who is that? Who is that? Is that the one I've heard of? Is that the one? All the while the demons on the inside. Don't you go. 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 But even the devils are subject. Don't you tell me it's the devil. If you want to get to him, you can. You can get to him. knew who he was what did James say thou believest in the time of persecution thou believest in the time of personal discipline, thou believest in his admonition to live above ungodliness thou believest he said you believe there's one God the devils also believe and they tremble. And we pull that out as an ace sometimes. But what James was saying was, that's not enough. Because you cannot proclaim a God that you will not bow before. He 
he fell at his feet. Jesus called that legion. Read the story carefully. He calls the legion of demons out. And he begins to speak to them. Not to the man. Naked and now coming into his right mind. He speaks to the legion. And they beg him. Do not send us into the deep. The reference is due to their own revelation of a storm. Because they know in Revelation 20, John would write that he took that serpent, that dragon. He sent him. Jesus, no. Jesus, no. You're having a bad day when you pick the pigs. I need you to hear something and be reminded of something right now. The only reason you've been in a storm is because your endurance through the storm is going to bring revelation to somebody else. And there's... Please hear me when I tell you it is one thing for you to trust God through a storm but it is another thing entirely that He could trust you with one. But I've got a word from heaven for somebody and if you think this is blabbing and grabbing I don't even care. I've got a word from heaven for somebody. The clouds are parting. The sun is beginning to shine. Somebody is less than a week from the right doctor's room. Come on, he's going to use your... Come on, somebody say, I'm not going down in this storm. I'm not going down in this storm. I got to get to the other side. There's somebody waiting on the other side. If you've been in a storm, I want you to lift your hands. And I want you right now. They're going to come sing. They're going to play. They're going to make it easy. It's going to be inconspicuous for you. But if you really believe He can put the church back together. If you really he can believe He can heal the marriage. If you really believe He can dry up the cancer. Come on, who am I talking to right now? The storm. It's been for a revelation. Throw your hands towards heaven. And with everything you've got, I want you to begin to magnify. 